Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video we're going to explore generating differential equations of motion for one of the simplest systems that operates in gravity that you could possibly imagine. This one. So we have a mass hanging from the ceiling uh, by a spring with spring constant k. And to solve this problem, what we typically do is we stick on a coordinate, call it y, generate a free body diagram, and as soon as we do this, that is specify that down is our positive um, y direction, we can put an inertial force on here, my double dot. If we impose a small or large positive displacement in the y direction, so we pull the mass down, there'll be a force pulling it back up to the tune of ky. And then we have this external force, f, and we can write down the differential equations of motion like so, and we're done. Now, it's almost silly to go through such a simple example, but here's the question that I want to leave you with and that we'll explore just a little bit more if you're interested. What is y? I defined it sort of, and I used it in my free body diagram, but I never really said what y is. If you know what y is, you don't need to watch the rest of the video. If you're not sure what y is, then continue on. So to explore what the heck y is, let's draw a slightly more complicated picture. What I'll do is, is draw a couple of ghost masses. Here's the first one. I've got a ghost spring too. And put this little ghost mass here. And what this is, is the unstretched location of the mass. Now I guess I'll switch colors and draw another ghost mass out here. And what this is, is the location of the mass hanging there with no externally, for, no externally applied forces, but it's hanging. So I guess there is an externally applied force, it's gravity. So it's the displacement of the mass just due to gravity. And then finally, here is our mass as it's vibrating back and forth, up and down. So let me extend this out and define, give some names to these different displacements. We'll call this y0, call this one y1. I'm not being very creative about this. And we'll call this y2. And I'll be very verbose about this and say that y2 is actually a function of time. It's the displacement of the mass as it's wiggling around. Now, these things aren't floating in air, floating in space. They're, the spring is obviously connecting them too, but I didn't want to put that on the figure and, and kind of, you know, mess it up. Well, let's see. So let's take a look at um, one of these. We'll look at two free body diagrams associated with this drawing. First, we'll look at this one. So we'll look at our, our ghost mass due to, um, uh, in the stretched configuration, but stretched only due to gravity. So it's really not a dynamic system, it's just a statics problem. I have externally applied force mg pulling down, and then I have a spring pulling it back up. Well, how much is it pulling it up? Well, it's the displacement right from the unstretched configuration. It's this distance. So it's k times y1 minus y0. And again, y1 and y0 are constants. Okay, so we can write out this, this, these equa this equation from this free body diagram like so. And we'll hang on to that for a minute. Now let's do the free body diagram of the actual mass. Well, let's see, what all does it have acting on it? It has this externally applied force, F. So I can draw that in, F. It also has gravity, Mg. And it has an, an inertial force in the opposite direction of the positive displacement. And so our positive displacement is, is y2, right? That's our absolute displacement of the mass from that fixed frame. So this is m, 
y2 double dot. And now we have our spring force. What's that going to be? Well, that's k. If we, in this configuration where I've stretched it down some positive amount, um, positive being down, then it's going to be y2, which is a function of time. Well, I'll just put that in just for a minute to be a bit verbose about it, minus that constant y0. So I can write out the equations from from this free body diagram as m y2 double dot plus k y2 minus uh, y0 equals mg plus f. Now what I'll do is, is I'll resolve out this mg. I'm going to take that mg and stuff it right into there. So I get m y2 double dot plus k y2 minus y0 equals k y1 minus y0 plus f. So if I stare at this equation for a minute, I can see a couple nice things happen. This y, this ky0 cancels with that one. And also, if I go ahead and define my displacement from the gravity dis stretched configuration, so from the red block down to the, the black block, and I, if I define that as being y of t is equal to y2 of t minus y1, okay, and I left in the, those time dependencies just to drive that point home, then what I can do is restructure this equation just a little bit and go m y2 double dot plus k there's a y2 lo and behold minus y1 equals f when I bring that term over to the left hand side and so that gives me m y2 double dot plus k y equals f I'm almost to exactly the same form that we had in that previous page that we just sort of did from, um, uh, you know, uh, just from our, our experiences with working with hanging masses connected by springs. Um, but I do have this y2 double dot floating around. Well, let's take a look at uh, y2. Okay, so there's y2. I could rewrite it as y2 is equal to y plus y1. And when I differentiate both sides, because y2 is a function of time, and y is a function of time, but y1 is not, I get that. So this equation gives me the m y double dot, I can replace the y2 with y, plus ky is equal to f. And that's the result we had on the previous page. But now we know what y is. y is the displacement of the mass from its gravity stretched configuration. Not that it's unstretched configuration, but the configuration it has when it's sitting there hanging in a gravitational field. So if I go up to our first page, I can now write this in. Y is the displacement from the static equilibrium configuration. And what I mean by that, in sort of blunt terms, is it's the configuration where the thing is stretched by gravity. That also explains the mystery of why there was no mg in this equation. I mean, we knew that this thing was hanging in a gravitational field, but um, a lot of times when people attack these problems, they say, well, we'll ignore gravity. Well, you're not ignoring it. It's actually because you are uh, defining y as being from the static equilibrium configuration. So that's it.
Again, my name is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.